Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson of my modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to continue looking through the numeric algorithms library, this time looking at exclusive and inclusive scan. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Now with these uh, particular algorithms here in the numeric algorithms library, which I'm going to go ahead and jump to here on CPP reference, uh, they're quite similar to partial sum, which we've already looked at. So you'll see some familiarity with them. Uh, these were algorithms that were added in a more recent version of C++. You can see C++ 17 here versus let's go ahead and look at partial sum. I believe this has been around since, uh, I, I think the early algorithm, let's see if we scroll down to the bottom, you can find out, I want to say C++ 98. Yeah, so that one's been around for a long time uh, for partial sum. So check out the video if you missed that one. Um, I will bring in the code snippet here briefly. This is from the partial sum video. Uh, we did a fun little dice roll, but the basic idea was if I had the values one, two, three, four, and five, and I wanted to compute the results here for partial sum, let's go ahead and see what the result is of that one. And then you can watch the full video for the uh, dice roll. But the basic idea is that we're doing one uh, in its first position, one plus two for its second position. Uh, and then we're using that second result that we're computing and then adding it into the third uh, value there. Okay, so that was the basic idea. Uh, so again, you can look at the sequence if you like here to understand uh, what we're doing with partial sum. Now, the big deal with these, again, if I go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and move this out of the way and we'll start a new uh, piece of code for uh, inclusive and exclusive scan here, um, is that, uh, and let's go to the C++ uh, website here, uh, with inclusive and exclusive scans, I'm going to go ahead and open up both of these pages here, we get the execution policy. So we can start doing things in parallel here. And effectively, if we have a problem that we can solve in parallel, uh, we can essentially, without doing anything different, just pass in an execution policy here uh, for doing things in parallel. Let's go ahead and see what those are here. Let's see. Uh, the execution policies, go ahead and click on that. Uh, and we've got the sequence policy, parallel policy, parallel unsequence policy, and unsequence policy, uh, which are described here. And we might need to do, I might have a separate video or maybe a series at some point on doing parallel programming, um, maybe in C++ or in general, uh, but this is the basic idea. This is probably the most common thing that you'll use for example, doing the parallel execution uh, policy here. Um, and Again, the basic idea is that you're able to split up a problem here. So if we're gonna do some sort of scan, for instance, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get that set up. You're probably doing some sort of prefix scan algorithm, potentially, I mean, there could be a number of algorithms here. And you could kind of imagine how this works. I'll give you a reference in a moment if you wanna work ahead of whenever I you know, get a chance to do a um, series here. Um, but let's say that we just have a few elements here. Um, in some vector here. Uh, let's let's give ourselves a few more here. Let's divide this up. Uh, and the basic idea is when I want to do the work here, uh, if I've got element zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven here, and you could kind of imagine how to do this. I'm going to go ahead and um, draw in uh, another uh, allocation here. Now I'm not saying that this is the exact algorithm using. There's a few different ways to do this naively and uh, not. Um, naively more interesting it's to basically take if we're saying uh, you know partial sum here some of these two values place them in here some of these two values maybe place them in here some of these two values place them in here and continuously sum up these values and uh, place them here and getting some result and the basic idea is you can kind of understand how we group things into smaller little blocks here and can maybe do things in parallel here. And we're sort of sweeping up here as we go here. Okay, so that's kind of a premise. You can imagine again, just separating out this task into different threads, doing things in parallel. Again, that's sort of the uh, theory here. I'll give you the, the book chapter if you wanna dive a little bit more into this here uh, from GPU Gems, which is freely available here on parallel prefix scan. Uh, this is going to talk about it in CUDA, of course, but it'll give you some of the, the basics and the terminology here. Okay, so anyways, that's the basic idea. Just to give you a little bit of a background here, let's get into the actual inclusive and uh, exclusive scan here. Uh, and we'll just, um, you know, use a uh, implementation. Of, let's start with inclusive scan, and then we'll switch it to uh, exclusive so we can see a 
uh, different version of it. Uh, and of course, we've got the const expert versions as most of the algorithms are becoming in the C++ standard, which is really cool. Uh, and as far as how this looks here, it's going to look pretty similar to partial sum. In fact, maybe we'll want to even recreate that previous example. And we'll have different variations, whether we're including the elements, um, all the elements, or uh, excluding all of them. Okay, so I'll uh, get to that in a moment here. Uh, but let's see, we take in the iterators for the range that we're going to be looking at here. Okay, so we could just ignore the policy for now, let's say. Uh, actually, let's look at one of these here that has the uh, const expert because that's this is most likely what we're going to use here. So here's our range. So we have some container, some vector that we're operating on, and then we're going to write out the result somewhere here. Okay, so that's what the output iterator is, where we're writing out to, maybe some separate vector called results, for instance. Uh, and then we can provide a binary uh, operation here. You know, if we want to do something uh, more interesting, let's say. I believe the binary operator by default is just going to be add. Let's see uh, if that is true here. Let's see in number three. Uh, let's see. Prefix sum using some operation here. Let's see here uh, if it tells us what the default is. Uh, if it's just like the, the plus or something. Uh, let's see. Plus. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess uh, that's what the, the default is. It depends. We can pass another operation. Um, yeah, that's the default for most of the, uh, if we don't have a binary operator here, it's just doing plus here. Okay. Otherwise we could specify our own. So anyways, that's exclusive scan here. Uh, so again, this is, uh, or excuse me, inclusive scan. Uh, and let's see what else do we get here as a description here? Uh, it's going to be pretty similar to partial sum. Uh, again, as we showed here, let's go ahead and try out some of these examples here. Uh, and we'll, we'll do the exclusive scan as well here. Uh, which it has here. Now, let me see if this page is actually any different here. I don't believe it is. <laughs> I think they're effectively the same page uh, with very similar examples here, but we'll play around with it just to get something a little bit different. Um, and again, we're getting O of N applications, so similar to partial sum, unless we're able to parallelize it. Um, and then that sort of is going to depend on the STL, I'm actually not sure on the actual STL algorithm. I'll have to look or maybe someone can comment below uh, as far as how much space it's using. But, you know, in theory, you can get something that's, um, well, at least in the CUDA example, right? Something that's maybe closer to constant time here <laughs> um, uh, and, and trade off or maybe uh, some n number of space or again, depending on how good your algorithm is. Um, so anyways, let's just go ahead and play around with this a little bit. I'll keep the example uh, nearby here. Uh, and let's open up our code. And let's go ahead and make sure that we include the numeric algorithm here. Uh, I'm going to use a vector here for writing into. Uh, for now here, maybe we'll play around with something different, but let's go ahead and create a vector here. I'm going to explicitly say that we're using ints here. Now, uh, this example is using the class template argument deduction that we love in C++, so it can infer the type. I'm going to be specific here about using uh, integers here. Uh, and let's use data. That seems reasonable enough. Uh, let's do a little bit of a different uh, example here, something like this. Uh, and let's go ahead and uh, let's write out our results here. Uh, now, this uh, example here is just writing out. Um, this is a nice trick here. I should probably do this in more examples here, but writing out to the output stream uh, so you don't have to write it to a collection and then print it out. Uh, I'll show you with a vector um, anyways here. Uh, and then let's see here, the zero here. Uh, now, that is for the uh, exclusive scan one. Um, let's go ahead and see here. Uh, oh, yeah, this is on the exclusive scan because uh, we didn't look at this, we do need some initial value here. And if you remember, just a little bit of a reminder, if you haven't been subscribed and watching these uh, videos here, uh, let's bring in another CPP uh, reference. We, we saw this with accumulate, right? Where we need to figure out what the initial value is. And this uh, argument here, which is uh, typed here, is important here. So if we're working with floats, we want to explicitly uh, use floats, okay? Um, and again, this is, we'll see the difference here in a moment between exclusive and um, inclusive scan uh, as we uh, write this out here. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and play around with this. Um, I'm going to create the uh, other vector here. And let's call this uh, inclusive results. And let's create another vector for exclusive results here. OK. Um, and we're going to need to write a little function here. Let's call it uh, print. Uh, vector, something of that nature here. We'll pass in a vector of integers. I'm going to pass it in 
by uh, reference here. Um, and I'll just call it V. And then let's just use a range based uh, for loop here for all of the data here. Now it is just integer data here. So we could probably get away with just using auto. We don't need to use any fancy uh, references or anything. And let's just do a C out here uh, of the data. V or excuse me, data. Oh, let's give this a better name here. Data is not great, but element or LM short for element, uh, just because we have one and we'll put a comma here and we'll just put the end line. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and try out some things here. And I want to be able to print out the vector for the uh, inclusive results here. Let's go ahead and start with that and do the inclusive uh, scan here. Inclusive uh, scan. Okay, so here is an example here. Uh, let's just use the, the default plus uh, operation for now for the binary uh, operation. Uh, so what I want to do here is look at the beginning and the end of my data here. And then where do I want to output things? Well, the inclusive uh, results, that's where I want to uh, write to. Now, again, um, I don't know how many times I make this uh, mistake in the video, but let's just see, can I just pass um, this, uh, this vector in here? Okay, uh, let's see what happens. Well, we need somewhere to write, uh, so again, uh, stay tuned here for a moment and let's see for our inclusive scan here. Let's make sure I'm on the right CPP page. I am. We've got somewhere to output and then our range that we want to perform the exclusive or excuse me, inclusive. How many times am I going to mix this up? Uh, scan. Let's go ahead and set this up for C plus plus 20 here. Compile it, run it and segmentation fault. Okay. So a few different things that uh, went wrong here. Uh, what's the first uh, problem that folks could imagine here? Well, let's look at inclusive scan here. Um, output iterator. Okay, so this is the version that we're using here. Nice C20. Um, now let's go ahead and see what we have to do here for where we're writing to the first uh, element here. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Um, let's see here. Um, what am I trying to find? Let's see. I think, oh, the beginning of the destination range here. Okay, uh, maybe equal to uh, first. Okay, fair enough. I wonder if we can find here, uh, let's see here if I find the legacy output iterator requirements here. Um, will it say exactly, and some of you know what the issue is here. Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to say explicitly here. So we got to fix it. Uh, whenever we get a segmentation fault, right? Most of the time, what that means is we're writing to somewhere where we haven't allocated. Okay, so let's go ahead and allocate here. Uh, how many results are we going to get for our inclusive results? Well, I've got eight here for data. Um, so I am going to have eight uh, for the inclusive results. Now, what's going to change here, or we'll observe here, uh, we'll look at that first element uh, to see what it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and allocate some memory here. Uh, I'll leave that error. Here, let's go ahead and run it. Uh, and now we're now we're in good shape here. Okay, so now it's actually running here, uh, and we're getting one, two. Uh, one plus two is three, and then three plus the next result of three is six, and then six plus the next result of four is ten. Again, so same same idea as again the the partial sum that we did here. Uh, my first element here. Let's change that just to make it a little bit more interesting. Let's make it again something that stands out like seventy seven, just so you can see what the result is. And that is our first uh, element here. Okay, so let's pay attention to that with the exclusive uh, scan here. Uh, and now let's go ahead and repeat our uh, little experiment here, but let's do the uh, exclusive scan. Exclusive scan, there we go. Uh, and we want this to be in the uh, exclusive results. And we wanna print out the exclusive results here, okay? So let's go ahead and give this a compile. Let's see if it's, a, is it that simple that we can just do the uh, swap here? Oops, it says Canada expects, okay, different amount of arguments. Okay, so we gotta look at our exclusive uh, scan. Uh, why? Well, look what's different with all of the uh, exclusive scans here. We've got an initial value, initial value, initial value, and an initial value here, okay? Um, so we need to provide some sort of uh, identity here uh, let's see if we do it uh, in this example here. Yeah, they're just going to pass in zero. 
basically every time here. Uh, okay, so let's see here. And, and well, let's spoiler alert if you looked at the examples here. Uh, let's pass in the identity. So um, zero, right, if I'm doing additions here. And again, what's the problem here? Well, again, didn't allocate for where we're writing out our results. So let's go ahead and do this is still going to be eight uh, again here. We're going to have eight positions. You're just going to see that the identity is uh, zero here. And you're going to see we basically have just shifted things over to the left. So we're sort of missing a value here. It just depends on if you need that last value. Um, so again, it really just depends. I suppose you just have to think about if you want to capture that first value or not. Uh, and that's the difference between inclusive or uh, excluding um, the uh the, the first value here. Okay, so that's how you can kind of remember it. Include everything there or exclude the first value and just use the identity. Okay, so if I put in the identity here as 100, that's effectively gonna be my uh, first value. Again, uh, I'll go ahead and run it here. So you would see 100 and then it'll add plus 77 plus 100 uh, for the third slot plus 77 plus two. Okay, so that's the idea here. Hopefully that makes sense here. Uh, and again, you can play around with it. Uh, now, same thing applies here uh, if you want to do some different operation here. Uh, so let's do the, um, instead of plus here, I, uh, let's do multiplies. Yeah, they do this in this example. That's that's fine here. Uh, but just to show you, uh, so multiplies. Okay, so I'll just pass that in. That's a built-in uh, object here. Uh, oh, and I got to put in the uh, empty brackets here to initialize this uh, function um object here it's it's something that's just uh invocable here oops let's see here what did i do here uh missing oh uh, i don't want the parentheses i think that's what i want here oops multiplies i think i just multiples ah, i see multiplies uh multiplies okay there we go um, oh, I almost got it. Oh, now I can get rid of the parentheses. There we go. Okay, because I just want that uh, callable function there. Okay, uh, this is going to be zero everywhere because the initial value is zero. Uh, so again, the little trick here with the identity, uh, probably one here is a better one. And this is going to give us really big numbers here. So uh, one uh, for the first result times 77 uh, times two for the third result gives me 154 times three gives me the next result and so on. So you can kind of work your way through that. Okay. Uh, so that's the basic idea here. So anyways, hopefully that is a useful little introduction to the STL uh, inclusive and exclusive scans. And again, you can write a binary uh, function here. We did that in the previous video uh, with a dice rolling. In fact, I have it open here uh, where you could take in um, Let's see, what did we do? We created a dice roll uh, object with two values here uh, that you could take in and do the uh, additions of. Now, what's sort of interesting here or something uh, that's a little bit of a homework assignment perhaps for you is to think about prefix sums and their applications. Now from that same uh, GPU uh, article here, I'll bring in uh, just a quick search here from uh, CMU, because you often want to figure out how to apply these things. I think this is for a larger uh, video set here. Um, I don't know exactly when this is written, but I thought it had a nice uh, list of like al applications of prefix sum. Now again, uh, prefix sum or, or this idea of a scan really um, is uh, a more fundamental operation, similar to the way that reduces a sort of fundamental operation, or you'd think of like a building block to build interesting stuff. So anyways, there's a list of algorithms here uh, that folks have built using these scans or parallels. So just, I don't know, I just wanted to, you know, have some uh, application here of why this stuff is useful. Uh, so anyways, hopefully that's useful. So anyways, folks, with that said, as always, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that lesson. You can check out all the lessons uh, and other courses that I have here. But uh, for the C++ course, if you want a distraction-free environment, check out courses.mshot.io. And I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully it was just something uh, new that you didn't know about in the STL algorithm as we're moving through it. And in fact, we've covered a lot of the numeric algorithms, at least through C++20 at this point, if you've been following along. So uh, well done on that. Anyways, folks, as always, thank you for your time and attention. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.